everybody. A big welcome to my channel if you've never been here before, and a big welcome back if you have. Uh, today is part one in a series I'm going to be doing about how to start your own sticker and shirt business, or you could just go with one or the other if you chose to. Uh, right now I have on the screen just some of the items that I've made over the past, uh, you know, year or, or more or whatever um, for various customers. I enjoy doing it. It's a fun little hobby and you can uh, make a few bucks doing something you like. So in this series, I'm going to be talking about some of the basics such as software, the different machinery, because I have a do, few different pieces of machinery and it just depends what you're making for what we'll use to uh, do them. So I want to uh, kind of go over some of the cost, what are the profits, uh, the different pieces of equipment, what you should buy new, what you should buy used, what brands to use, all of that. And hopefully it will help some of you get on your feet as to building a profitable little side gig and have have some fun doing it. Now, I will warn you that I don't have uh, the greatest production skills, all that, so it's not going to be like some of the other videos on there but with me you get a little bit more of a maybe a personal touch on a video because it's just me showing you the stuff I do and how I do it I also would like to take this opportunity just a little disclaimer that I don't actually I've never worked for a sign business a shirt business anything like that so pretty much everything I'm going to show you is stuff I've just figured out on my own or from YouTube or anything like that so there may and probably is better ways to do things but I'll show you what's worked for me and uh yeah, hopefully you guys will have fun. I'm going to try to have fun making these videos, and we will see you progressing through. But now let's get into some of the equipment. Okay, let's just get right into it, guys. So one of the first things you're going to need is software. Now we're going to go over the hardware, but just since I'm sitting here in my living room, I figured I'd do software. So the program I use is called FlexiSign, and it's right there. It's... A very good piece of software and in videos where I'm showing you how to actually make the stuff you'll end up getting to see how I use the software now there is other kinds there's different there's free programs there's I believe some people are able to cut out of various photo programs things like that so know that but this is a good business one um, I'm going to, I guess, say that I bought mine as a burned copy for about 50 bucks, but it's actually like a $5,000 program or something for the pro version I have. Um, I'm not telling you to do that, and I just realized that I got my artwork, the crotch in the corner, so I just want to get that in case you wanted to know what that was, so I'm not a pervert, I just like art. Um, but anyhow, that out of the way. The software I use is really good. I used to have uh, WinPC sign and it is another good program however it's got limited it's good if you're just getting a cutter but it doesn't have any printing uh, capabilities so when we get into some of the equipment that's where that will become a factor if you're just going to be doing cutting with this is one of my cutters right here this um, is an old Roland system then you can get away with something such as WinPC so you can go ahead and google that and check it out and I think that's only about a hundred dollar program and I actually bought that all legit. Um, so let's get into some of the equipment. So first off, this is my old Roland PNC 1410, I believe it is. I bought this used on Kijiji, which is just like Craigslist for people that don't have Kijiji, um, for I believe it was $350. This is an old machine. It's probably 25 years old or something like that, but it is a quality machine. It does an amazing job. The cuts are true. Um, you can see I've just got little random pieces of crap stuck to it but it is some of the older equipment is hard to find ones that are compatible with a USB port because they used the old um, old connections this one did allow using that so that's something to keep in mind when you're getting older equipment that if you go with like a no-name brand older equipment you may not get that USB compatibility however when you go with the name brand such as Roland there's generally a way so I have also a black Chinese um, no-name plotter. It does the trick. It's nowhere near as accurate or as um, as detailed. This can do very, very fine little cuts, as you can see right there. These are kind of ripped up now. These have been picked at and stuff, but the, whereas the Chinese machines maybe don't have that kind of capability. 
so we're going to move on to, and I'll just leave it recording. It only takes us a second to get there. I'm going to get on to another piece of my equipment here. And that's from the intro. Um, this is a big Roland machine that I got. I actually got this for free. And these machines are about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Excuse my calendar. Um, new, I got this for free, but it needed a print head and it needed all inks and massive amounts of work. So I ended up actually putting in about $2,500 or $3,000 into this machine, getting it going. Um, I've had it up and running. However, right now it's just got some challenges um, with one print head. I've got some cleaning to do anything like anyway. So hopefully I'll get it back up and running in no time. This is an eco solvent printer. This allows you to do printed stickers such as those that, um, various other things, the printed banner that you saw in the original where it said we do printed banners. That's from this roll of banner material right here. Um, it allows for printed shirts, full color printed photographs, anything you want on a shirt with heat transfer. It's printable and cut heat transfer vinyl. So this is a great option. However, to get a fully functioning machine such as this, um, generally speaking, you're looking upwards of at least three to five thousand dollars for an old one, and new you you're fifteen, twenty, fifty thousand um, dollars. These machines are not cheap. These are something I would not advise somebody just starting out to buy new, as the cost is large and the return on your investment ROI is potentially years down the road if you ever get it back at all. Um, excellent piece of equipment though if you can find something like this used in decent enough condition at the right price by all means go ahead and get it because this is a workhorse when it's when it's working but i'll get to that sorry i put my hand in front of it okay so now I'm, we're gonna go to this printer this is just a normal epson printer nothing fancy about it um sorry i'm gonna go like that this is used for doing, um, these are transfer materials. These allow me to do full color printed images on shirts. They are water-based ink, so they don't last that long, or just whatever ink comes in the machine, they don't last that long. You're potentially only getting, you know, several washes out of the shirt. Great for a quick event. It only costs you, I think, about 50 cents a shirt for the image, plus your cost from a shirt to make. Um, and they have ones for the the materials for light and dark materials and all the instructions. I like to give a shout out to Science Supply Canada because that is where I get most of my material. Um, they are great folks out there. We're going to go over some of the material in this video as well. This is a little bit different printer. It is a normal printer that's been converted and it is using a sublimation dye. So it's on the side here, it's got a little system. And when I do an actual video making a sublimation shirt, I will go over that. It's a special system that uses this special material here and it's to be used on polyester shirts and it allows you to permanently dye the material. It's really a cool process. The, the, the ink starts off as a liquid, becomes a solid as it's printed on and then as you're putting uh, onto the paper and then as it's going onto the shirt becomes a gas and then it, it's, a, it's a really cool system so we will uh, be doing a video on making sublimation shirts and then down here we've got a uh, silk screening system I don't generally use that um, I just normally stick with what I've got and do it like that you might want one of these it's just an old one and that's just for cutting along the edges so a lot of my business what I do is just stuff like this, like little stickers, five bucks each. Um, so five bucks each, you think, well, that doesn't sound like you're going to make much money. So let's talk about that. Let's go back down the hall. We're going to go to some material. I'm going to give you some ideas of costs. Sorry for, I just didn't want to stop the video and have to stitch it in. These materials are the stickers I use. So it's not really a sticker, it's a vinyl. So it's signed vinyl. I use a brand called Oracle, which if I can show you right here, it's upside down. 
this is high quality vinyl it's a it's a good brand you're gonna get a good product out of it it's very sticky um, I, can't, I can't say good enough things about Oracle I love their vinyl and I find it a lot easier to use and weed which is weeding is when you're pulling out the bad stuff if you saw the video at the beginning when I was making that when you're removing the parts you're not going to use that's called weeding um, one of the other tools you're going to need are weeding tools such as this this is a Caesar weeding tool this was about twenty dollars Canadian um, you don't have to spend that much there are cheaper ones I don't know where my other one is right now I've got one right here that's one I've got a few anyway but I actually really like that and that was well worth the twenty dollars I will say that uh, next piece of equipment is a shirt press. This is an old shirt press I bought for about 100 bucks or 150 bucks on Kijiji. Once again, you do not need to buy a new piece of equipment for this. You can go ahead and buy this used. Um, I do have a Chinese one as well, but the heating plate is nowhere near as even as this old one. That's, it looks so dusty. Um, this is a great old machine. I love it. I had to replace the controller, which I just went and this is off a stove. I could probably clean it. It's dirty. I, when I put it on, there was temporary. I meant to, and then I just left it, but I meant to actually clean it all up. This old thing actually heats the shirts really, really well. I use a Teflon sheet, which is over here and with some of my, some of my shirt materials here. Um, most of my shirt material is Caesar easy weed. Um, there's a big difference between that and some of the Chinese ones. I'm not sure if that one was a Chinese. No, that's a Caesar as well, and I know that because that is the writing from my Sign Supply Canada guy. But um, I have tried some of the Chinese, and not to knock Chinese people, but the Chinese heat transfers, and I'm going to be honest, they were just garbage. They were junk. They were no good at all. So um, you're going to need, if you're going to do shirts, you're going to need to find yourself a supply of shirts. So I've got all these supply of shirts down here. And sometimes I supply the shirt, sometimes my customer does. And when we get into pricing, we'll talk about that. I just want to go over the equipment first. You'll need some random stuff. Obviously you're gonna need good scissors, you're gonna need tape, like measuring tapes. Um, depending what you're doing, if you're getting into banners, you need uh, grommet. grommets and the toolkit to do grommets. Um, if you're gonna do printers like that, so you get your hands on one of those, you're gonna need this head cleaning liquid. Solvent inks um, have a ha habit of clogging the print heads. That bottle right there was a hundred dollar bottle. Um, you're gonna need tape. This roll of tape, when I go to my supplier to get the tape done, it actually comes in a 24 inch roll and they cut it to you though. So I get an 18 inch and a six inch, which makes it easier for depending what I'm doing so that way when I'm doing a small sticker such as this I can mask it with six inch tape instead of using a whole big piece I can just that one little thing so it's all about you're trying to maximize your profits with the least amount of waste as possible so we've got that these are silk screen screens in case we do a silk screen video I don't even know if I will because I don't even really use it but if you guys want to comment below and I will uh, I'll do one because I can show you how you can make the screens using a plotter and sign vinyl you don't need the uh, the lighting equipment and all that the emulsion fluid um, to do silk screening you can do it uh, with the equipment I have so Give me a second, I'm going to grab a pen and paper, and we will go over pricing, profits, cost, all that. Okay, so we're going to use this sticker as an example, just because I happen to have it here. This was somebody had ordered um, one, I just I'd cut two out. Um, maybe somebody else will take it at some point. But we'll use this as the example. So my material, I use the Oracle. It cost me about $20 for um, five yards. So, oh, sorry, I kicked my tripod there. So, now for, so that's, if we go like this, it's 24 inch material, and so five yards, you're about 15 feet, and it's two feet by 15 feet. Something like this, 
we grab our tape measure, uses nine inches. Normally my $5 stickers are in the average of eight inch by eight inch, give or take. But then you always have some excess around the edges. You can see the spacing around it. Sorry, try to stay in the shot here. But so let's just say 10 by six for the average sticker. So if we go like that and we say that even if I'm getting only two stickers, but normally I'd get three out of this strip, but let's just say that. So it's costing me roughly, what, $1.25 a foot? Give or take on it, I didn't actually figure out the math on it, but so per foot. So now I'm gonna get out of $1.25, I'm gonna get $20 return. So every $1.25 I spend gives me $20 in sales on that size of a sticker. Now, your profit margin can drop as so somebody wants a 12 by 12 sticker. I don't necessarily charge them $10, I might charge them $7. So it is variable and then it depends. Sometimes people want a 10 foot sticker. You know what I mean? If it's for the side of a truck or an office wall or something like that. And then I may say they want a 10 foot sticker and I may say $40. Right, so or this 15, 15 foot piece, even if I give somebody that for $50, it comes down to, it only costs me 20 bucks for this piece of material. Now we're just, we're dealing with labor only. So if I have somebody cut out a design, let's just say Henry's, whatever, um, Henry's TV or something. Anyway, so he wants a big sign for his wall. That cost me $20 to make, plus the cost of my tape. I gotta remember, I gotta factor in my tape. So even if we add that extra quarter per foot, say for tape, it's not that much, but. Um, now I'm gonna say, you know what, Henry? I'm gonna sell you that, that 15 foot piece now for $50, just roughly, let's just say that. So I'm, say $25 in profit, say it takes me 20 minutes to, cut. I'm not, I'm not worried about the time of the cut, the machine cutting that doesn't factor into my time. Really. I'm sitting, it's a hobby business. I'm watching TV or I'm playing video games or I'm working on another project or whatever the case may be. So I'm not worried about the cut time. I'm worried about how long does it take me to do that weeding? So it's going to take me roughly 20 minutes to weed that if it's not too intricate, if it's intricate, if it's really intricate, I don't care. I'll tell them it's $70. If it's got a lot of detail. So that's something to factor in price on sign material. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys. Hopefully you're finding this inf information useful. Um, so that's, and this is Canadian pricing. I gotta say everything is Canadian pricing. US pricing is gonna be completely different and different markets dictate the price for a sticker. Here where I am, this is a $5 sticker where you be, might be, maybe it's a $10 sticker, maybe it's a $2 sticker. It depends on your market. So that's sign vinyl, gives you an idea what I spend. So going back to some of the vehicles you might have saw in the pictures, the Beaudry roofing, if you saw the big black roofing truck, I charged him uh, $300, $300 for the truck, charged him I think $150 for the trailer, the orange, the black van with the orange lettering, I charged her $200 or $250. The material cost on those jobs isn't very high. It comes down to labor and installation. So if I'm, say, even on a high end, say I spent $50 on material and I made $300 for the time. So I'm a few hours in between design time and everything. So there is profits to be made if you're willing to learn the skill and have the patience to do it. Now, shirts are a little different thing. We're just going to give you a quick rundown on shirts. Easy weed material cost me, this is three foot, so it's one yard, so three foot by 15 inch and this costs me for plain white black basic colors ten dollars i out of that three foot will get anywhere between three and so it's it'll be three plus shirts because it just depends on the logo some people want a little tiny logo some people want a big logo and i i charge for shirt including the shirt $20. I know this is numbers everywhere. $20. If you come to me and you say, oh, I want a shirt for my friend's 
birthday shower or bridal shower or whatever it is. You want something funny. You want one shirt, 20 bucks. If you want two shirts, I might say $35. Um, and it just depends. There comes a point where I'm not going any lower because I'm not, I'm not making it. So I'm not going to sell the shirts for $10 each. Ultimately, you have to consider the cost of shirts. So I, I know that sometimes I have to go to Michael's Craft Store and buy Guild and Blank shirts, and they might cost me $7 a piece. And so then if you divide this up, if you say, on average, I assume I'm going to get three shirts per yard. Sometimes I can get, I can get 20 out of it. Or minimum is really going to be three. I'm going to get at least three um, at the cost of three thirty-three each plus tax. I said let's just call it. It's cost me four dollars plus the cost of the shirt. Now if I go to Michaels and I spend four dollars on the material and then seven dollars on the shirt, it costs me eleven dollars, and maybe it takes me twenty minutes. I make nine dollars profit for the twenty dollars. Now this is keeping in mind. This is evening work. I'm sitting at home. It's not a big deal for me, um, but. If I get the shirt from my wholesalers, I have a couple uh, wholesalers that I go to. I actually get the shirts for $2.25 each. And now say it cost me $4 for the design. That is only $6.25 per shirt. I'm making almost $14 now for that shirt for 20 minutes which now turns into, you know, I'm making like, you can make 45 or you, and it doesn't even necessarily take 20 minutes. You can be making $50 an hour making shirts at home if you do it right. If you get the shirts from a proper supplier and Gildan is the brand I use. It's really the only brand I use. I love Gildan. So you got to find a good deal on a wholesaler. You can get good deals online, but you got to buy high volume to get the deal once you pay the tax and the shipping. So if you can find somewhere, I go downtown Toronto to Chinaland and uh, Chinatown, whatever, and get good deals there. Um, and they've got, like normally I do just basic white, but here's like really cool reflective gold. Um, we were talking about different materials. This is Fortnite shirts that I did printed on the other machine, but the one that's not functioning properly right now. Um, so I charge the same for this shirt. I don't charge any more. I don't charge any less if somebody wants this on the shirt. Um, and the reason being, this material costs me more, but the labor is down. This thing, uh, it, it's got its own design. It's very quick to weed it. So the time it takes to make this shirt is a lot less than one where I made it because the process is the same to make this as it is to make a shirt up until the point where you stamp it on the shirt. So... Um, I think that pretty much runs down the basics of what it is we're doing. So that means next time on my video, I'll show you some of the basics of either making a shirt or sticker and we can go from there. And like I said, hopefully you guys can appreciate the videos, not like the normal ones. Cause I've watched a million of the normal videos that people put up, how to start a shirt business and that hopefully mine's a little more. I don't know, in depth on a personal level, like, you know what I mean? Who else draws this crap out <laughs> but me with my messy writing? But I've been wanting to do this for quite a while because I've had a number of people that asked about how you do it. I've gotten quite a few private messages and stuff. So at least now you can see a bit of an intro to it and then stay tuned. I'm going to do some more. We're going to show you the regular heat transfer, printed heat transfer, uh, sublimation dye, um, and then we've got different kinds of, uh, for the heat transfers, we've got flock material, which is like a velvet finish. We've got glitter materials. We've got the golds. We've got how to do two color, three color on shirts and stickers, different process for both. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up and I will show you some of the basics in the software that I use. Um, because it, even though it's the software I'm using, it will most likely be very similar to any software you will be using as well. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, if you don't mind leaving a comment or a like uh, to let me know. And if you don't find me uploading these often enough, don't be shy. Let me know in the comments. Stay on me. Harass me for it. And I will uh, get back to work making the videos and try to get some out and show you guys how to do this. So uh, closing out on this, I'll tell you that for a used machine, a basic machine like the one I showed you in my living room, and a used heat press, there's no reason you should be over $500 to start this business. 
absolutely no reason at all you should be spending more than five hundred dollars you you do need to invest that little bit to get going but you should be all in with some shirts machinery um and then look around for software win pc they offer free trial i think you get 30 days free with cutting ability um or you can search the internet and find the one i've got it was like 50 dollars us or something and it was a legit uh hack one um but anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope that uh, you've learned something, and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time.